So the motor is here and we can take a look at what I was sent from lightning rods. I've also made some progress on the hybrid seat design and I have a ton of Molex pins so I've made the plugs available on the website store. I have a few on the way to people so I'm excited to see what they do with those. First though let's have a good look at the LR motor. I said in my last video I'd be a bit more excited than normal but it's not really me so instead Bruno will now express what I feel when I look at this motor. Yeah! Check out this monster! Thanks Bruno. I hope you don't mind. But seriously, this thing is an absolute monster. It is rated at 10 kilowatts, but that really doesn't mean much when you consider that the BBS HD is rated at 1 kilowatt, and we all know what you can do with that motor. Just like the BBS HD, the Lightning Rods has an IPM rotor, so you can hit it with a ton of field weakening and not worry about the magnets flying off, unlike the Sir Ron, where they're screwed onto the surface of the rotor. This motor has not yet been pushed to its absolute limits and it's going to be a ton of fun finding out what they are. Right now this is one of three motors in the world with this configuration and it might be the first to go on the road depending on how I go with the next stages of the build. The main core of the motor with the rotor and stator sits at the front and that drives a pulley which runs a belt to the jack shaft to form the first stage of reduction which is 2.22 to 1. The belt is tensioned with this device here so to put the correct tension on the belt, the bolts pivot the motor forward slightly before everything gets torqued and locked down into the final position. The jack shaft sits in here and has an 18T sprocket, which takes the 219 cart chain back to the rear 67 tooth sprocket. This is the second stage of reduction for this system. So the total reduction with the motor with these parts is 8.27 to 1 which means in real terms that the rear wheel will spin once for every 8.27 turns of the motor. 5,000 motor RPMs therefore translates to 605 wheel RPM, which with a 26 inch total wheel diameter translates to 46.5 MPH. Now consider that this motor has exceeded 11,000 RPM in bench testing. I think we're gonna need Bruno again. Check out this monster! Cheers, Bruno. I love that you get a decent length of cable with this motor. I've already used the Molex plug I designed to get the hall sensors wired up and ready. If we go to the back of the motor, you can see that the aluminum block here is for mounting and positioning the rear disc brake caliper. The rear dropouts were extended and converted to horizontal chain tensioning, and these are the mechanisms that do that job. Having the chain tensioned in this manner is very important as it will allow for the use of regenerative braking with the mid-drive motor. If the chain had been tensioned using a derailleur or a spring-based tensioner, then running the chain backwards under regen braking conditions is not possible. The rear hub is a 32-hole custom-made billet. It might be the very last of these as they turned out to be not very cost-effective. I'm not gonna have the pedal system with the bike I'm building, but there is an option for this kit to run an independent pedal system with its own chain. There is a point to mount the derailleur and Mike has other hubs that allow for a regular 10 speed cassette. So no electronic pad system, you just get to pedal along at motorcycle speeds should you wish to do so. The maximum tie width at the back is three inches and the swing arm itself is long enough to accept a 21 inch wheel size. One of my favorite details about the motor is the subtlety of the branding. You have to really look for the LR logo, but you can find it on the rear sprocket and also the lower part of the motor mount. The logo is of a 1932 Ford Roadster convertible, which is one of the original hot rods that was cruising the roads in the USA during a golden era of motoring. A few weeks ago, I shared the first design for an adjustable motor seat that would allow for towing. This is a full scale test version of an evolution of that design. Initially, I've been looking at getting an aluminum piece fabricated for the seat platform. This design though, I think I can fabricate entirely in-house. I have a roll of carbon fiber reinforced polycarbonate to print the parts. Right now, they are in PET-G, but it still feels very solid. My father-in-law said it actually feels more solid than a lot of the bike seats he has tried. For testing, I've also made some parts that will allow me to try out the seat on a regular style bike so I can see what works best for comfort 
while the lightning rods bike is being built. And the next stage with this design is to make the cushioning part because right now it's a bit painful. I'll likely be using clips as part of that design, like the one that I have here for attaching a flashlight to a 22 millimeter handlebar. So there'll be a lot more on this build soon. If you want more regular information, be sure to check on the website and maybe join the Discord channel. And links to both of these are in the description. Cheers.